parce qu'elle est OK pour pas OK. Parce que parler capable de grande bagaille au meilleur. Parce que essayer communiquer c'est un signe force. Toujours une raison pour partager qui j'en ont senti. Parce que santé mentale au compte. Sim, porque ele vai mais bolo mais, só dá muito aí. But um, with that, good afternoon and welcome everyone. I am Paloma Perez, the press secretary for the Federal Communications Commission. It is a genuine pleasure and joy to be in the city of Boston. And before I turn it over to our, before I turn it over to our esteemed speakers, I just wow. to genuinely thank uh, the entire team at the Office of Innovation and Technology, the Age Strong Commission, uh, Mayor Wu's team, who have been fantastic partners. Um, to really help us promote the Affordable Connectivity Program, which is the nation's largest broadband affordability effort in our history. And we're very excited to be able to promote that today. So with that, I don't want to uh, use more time. I'm going to turn it over to FCC Chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel, providing a few words and really demonstrating why we're here today. Thank you, Mayor Wu, for having us. It's good to be back in Boston. I say back in Boston because New England's my home. I was born here. Yeah. I have a good sense to marry someone from Boston. <laughs> so you're looking at Red Sox Nation. Even though Amen. I live in Washington, D.C. right now, and I run the Federal Communications Commission. And as I was saying, it's wonderful to be here with Mayor Wu. The first woman to run the city of Boston in 391 years. So I'm the first woman to run the Federal Communications Commission in history, but that's just 87 years. <laughs> and you know, the thing about that, about being first, is that you don't have time to waste. You got to get things done. And one of the things that I want to get done is close the digital divide. And we all saw it during the height of the pandemic. Those kids sitting outside the fast food restaurant with that borrowed laptop just to get online to attend class. People who had to leave their homes and sit in parked cars, catch up with their office and use their cell phones. And maybe you know some people who couldn't quite have that telemedicine appointment because they didn't have the bandwidth they needed to keep up with their doctors and their health care providers. This problem isn't impossible. We can fix it and we can solve it. And so much of the digital divide we've talked about in the United States has been about rural communities and the lack of infrastructure where service doesn't go, but I just want to tell you we also have problems in urban communities because people are struggling to pay for gas and groceries and it's hard to stay online, get online, but you know that online connection is no longer about just sitting online watching videos, sending a few emails, it's about keeping up with modern life and everyone, including elderly people, deserve that. And for the first time ever, we have a program in the United States called the Affordable Connectivity Program that is designed to help. If you're on Medicaid, you use the Lifeline Program, SNAP, you have a child or grandchild on the free and reduced lunch program at school who lives with you, this program can help. It takes $30 off your monthly internet bill. And you know what? We've got providers that offer service right at $30. It can also offer up to $100 off of a tablet or a laptop computer. The bottom line is we want to figure out a way to get everyone online. And this program, in the 15 months it's been up and running, we've had 17 million households sign up that rely on it. <laughs> the biggest broadband affordability program ever in our history. And here in Boston, we have 38,000 households that rely on it. But here's the thing. 
there's so many more that qualify. And I like to think in the, at the FCC we're really charming and we get the word out about this program, people will listen. But what I know is that you need to hear from people who are local and people you trust. And that's why we're here with the mayor today and her team who've been so gracious to talk about how you can sign up for this program, tell people you know about this program, and then prove to everyone that Boston is the city that knows how to get everyone everywhere online. And look, as someone who could call herself a near native, I'm here for it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, one more round of applause for Chairwoman Jessica Rosenborg. <laughs> Thank you so much to all of the team members who have helped to make this program possible and for this event today. Um, I am, um, so we're also here with Commissioner Karen Charles from the Massachusetts Department of Telecommunications and Cable. <laughs> Michael Baldino, who is the Director and General Counsel of the Massachusetts Broadband Institute and his team. City of Boston's Chief Information Officer, who's been laser focused on digital equity, Chief Santiago Santigarcia. Uh, and we're thrilled to always stay connected with our community members, and particularly seniors in our community through our Age Strong Commission. Uh, Commissioner Emily Shea is here, and our Chief of Human Services, Jose Masso, are both, here, both are here. And thank you, um, Sam Kim from our Intergovernmental Relations team uh, for making sure that our, our connections to Washington and the programs that we can set up are making the most use of resources available for our residents here in the city of Boston. There are many, many people in this room who have been focused on digital equity because we understand how much it affects so many parts of our lives today, from applying for jobs, for kids or grandkids, from connecting with family and being able to FaceTime or, or stay updated with what's happening in, in, in all of your family members, uh, to accessing healthcare and critical services, or sometimes tuning into a neighborhood meeting or a city, um, city hearing that is happening so that we can make that more convenient and accessible as well. I want to especially thank uh, folks who are putting a lot of their, their time into this, uh, the Deputy Director of the National Digital Inclusion Alliance, Gina Cooper Benjamin, is here. Uh, Deputy Grandmaster of Prince Hall Grand Lodge, Mr. Justin Petty, is here. Senior Director of Counseling and Support Services from, from Ethos, Bob Connors. And Co-Founder and Executive Director of Excel Education, Don Sands. Uh, and I know Tech Goes Home and uh, Mass Confederate Partnership, many, many other partners are here in this room. We want to make sure that from our littlest learners to our age strong community members, everyone in between, every generation, every family is able to access not only the connection from getting online affordably, reliably, but also have the skills and know-how and have the equipment that you need, the tablets or, or laptops. We think of it in partnership as a couple different, the, the three legs of the stool, as, as I know Tech Goes Home talks about it, and it's our job to focus on all three of them with every possible way we can get information out to residents. We saw that during the height of the pandemic, everything changed in how we communicate with each other, and um, many who could not afford internet access or who had not been received had not received some of the skills training or equipment were very much faced with additional barriers with services. Um, I remember being online and trying to oversee Zoom kindergarten for my older son in that period, and about half the class was on on any given day. A couple students, you could tell couldn't hear the connection very clearly. Sometimes the teacher's connection when they were based in our schools was in and out. And so we are really trying to take the lessons learned there, keep what worked, and we want to bring back in person as much as possible, have community spaces and events. But there were many people, many more people who were able to access conversations and important meetings because you don't have to leave and find your way down to City Hall every single time. And so we want to keep that while continuing to expand who has supports in accessing uh, the, again, the, the skills, the equipment, the connection to do that. 
here in Boston, some of the actions that I'll report on that our team has been leading. Last fall, we published a digital equity assessment identifying the communities and spaces with the most urgent need, because we want to start there and really target resources. And worked with our federal delegation, thank you Senator Markey, Senator, Senator Warren, Congresswoman Presley, and the entire delegation, to secure millions of dollars in funding to provide laptops and home internet service to more than 23,000 residents across public housing and the Boston Public Schools. Today, we're partnering with local community organizations and other cities across Massachusetts to coordinate our efforts and help bridge those gaps where, where they still are. Last month, we are very grateful to receive a grant from the FCC, thank you, to help raise awareness around the Connectivity Program. In Boston, more than 34,000 households have access to affordable internet access through this program. And the commissioner has issued, the chairwoman has issued a challenge that uh, we, 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 like, we like to be a winning championship city here in Boston, so we want to get our, our numbers up yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and take full advantage of the program here. We want to connect if anyone here today could use that $30 a month off your annual internet bill or, or use help navigating, uh, access a, a laptop or a tablet. We want to get you signed up right here and, and right now. So after this program, uh, team members from the FCC, from our city's Department of Innovation and Technology, and the Age Strong Commission will be able to help anyone enroll who is here. And there are service providers who can help immediately apply that ACP discount to applicants' bills if you're approved here. So that means you could walk out of this very room today with a lower internet bill. And hopefully, when you do so, also take on the responsibility of being an ambassador for us. Spread the word. You all are our best way to get information out. Tell your friends and family and neighbors uh, this is a program that is available nationally, which means the cities that, you know, when there's a pool of resources available federally, it's on us to grab our share of that and make sure that we're spreading the word and, and take full advantage. Um, I want to thank our colleagues at the SEC, Do It, and HTRON for helping us create a more equitable city where all of our residents have access to the programs and services that all of us deserve. Um, and we know that this connectivity kind of is going to be a way of the future. And for us, Boston is a city for everyone, and that means we're connecting everyone in our communities and getting everyone connected to your homes and to the infrastructure that we have to deliver physically and digitally and uh, in every other way for people. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Um, my name is Santiago Garces. I am the Chief Information Officer for the City of Boston. And to tell you, in the year that I've been in this job, uh, we've been working very hard and working in community and partnership with all of you to try to figure out how is it that we connect our residents to this incredible resource that is digital communications. Um, Think about the pandemic and we look at how much the world has changed and the vacant buildings and the office spaces. And you see that the, some of these jobs that would provide unique opportunities for people to come out of poverty, to be able to find a better life, now depend on internet connectivity. If you're going to be, uh, some of these white collar jobs require you to work remotely, to be able to connect for you to be able to speak with your family members, uh, especially if you have family that is abroad. And we need all of your help in making sure that you tell others. Eh, en particular, necesitamos ayuda en que la gente, los hispanoparlantes, la comunidad de inmigrantes de Boston, sepan que estos programas existen, que pueden beneficiarse de 30 dólares de subsidio de internet al mes, y necesitamos su ayuda Si tienen nietos o parientes, gente que conocen que se beneficiarían de, de esos servicios, por favor, ayúdenos. Eh, we need all of your help. We need to we'll keep working in community. And um, I think that this is a great opportunity to make Boston. We want less than 1% of the population to not be connected. And if those are not connected, it's because they wish not to be connected. <laughs> so, we are about half, we think about half of what we, qual the people that qualify for ACP. So okay. we still have a little bit Double of way to go. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
So I went to Dave, he told me, I told Dave, I said, Dave, what can I do about this? He said, well, they got this going on, got this. He said, sign, sign me up for that. That was nice. So <coughs> then I learned out that, well, you don't need all these cables. You don't need this. You just need a small Wi-Fi box and um, go Wi-Fi. So I did that. Now <coughs> my bill is like $9.99 a month. So I got through. I got through. Yeah. I got through. Yeah. That was good. He, it's a lot of... Um, that's a lot of of uh, activity that you can get, you know what I mean? Just not only uh, cable, you got Eversource, you got your phone, you got, it's so much stuff that, that's, that, that uh, you gotta reach out. It's so much stuff, so much stuff you can get a discount on, a lot. Uh, even Eversource, they, pay, they take $30 off on your, on your light bill. I don't know who knows that. They take $30. Uh, telephone, that's $30 a month. It's a lot of, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, just got to get ready. Ask Dave, ask the social worker. You know, see, how can I do this? Or what do I need to do? And do a little research and find it. It's there. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to know that we have held more than 700 events to try to do reach out. And any community that reaches out to us at the FCC, we will work with you, either virtually or in person, to set up a discussion about how to train people to help in the community, to make sure you have materials to give out. We want to be your partners in getting the word out so that you get it out to the people who live in your backyard in a way that they understand and hear you. So we'd be happy to work with you to do that. Take one more question for anyone who has it. Yeah, can you just talk about the difference in a person's life who is on the outside looking at it as opposed to someone who's got access to uh, this, this um, financial aspect will help a lot of people who were only able to look from the outside and not even actually enjoy it and know what this is. Absolutely. And I'll leave, uh, Mayor, I think the question is essentially for folks who have not uh, had the opportunity to enroll in this program, what is the benefit, what is the change in life that we might see from it? I think we spend a lot of time in government and as a community talking about things that we need, right? Services that we need or a road or program or building or or some bit of infrastructure. But what I know from my family's experience growing up in an immigrant family and facing language barriers and <coughs> cultural barriers, just because something is there and it exists doesn't mean that everyone feels connected to it and can access it. And these days, we, we are pretty lucky in Boston that we have a lot, uh, we have seven plus internet service providers, so unlike you know, as, as the chairwoman was saying, there are different needs in different parts of the country and rural communities have a different set of challenges than city centers. Here, our challenge is not that we don't, we need the um, internet <coughs> connections and the fibers and all of that to, to be installed or to find someone, who, a company who can provide that service. They're there, but it's, it's about how we make sure that everyone can reach that. That's the training. Uh, but it's also the, the financial, the affordability of it too. There is so much that is weighing on our families these days. Every time you go to the grocery store, it, you know you see the, the stress piling up. And so to be able to have support from my administration and our partners at the federal level and at the state level along with the city to say we recognize that this is such an important service that everyone needs to be able to access all of the benefits of this community, of our economy, of the, the ways that we're providing services and growing the city. Sometimes the internet is a way to even find out about other services that exist around you. So it's really fundamental now and um, we, we just, as you heard, we have room to, in terms of residents who qualify versus how many residents are signed up, 
we want to double that number to close that gap all the way. And Boston has so much opportunity here. This is part of the glue and the connection that will be able to open people's um, eyes and get people actually to the, the, the doors of opportunity that we're trying to create all across the city and every neighborhood. Paske pale capable grand bagay yo miyo. Paske essayer communiquer c'est un signe force. Tous jou gon raison pour partager ki jan ou santi ou. Paske santé mentale ou compter.